Hey you folks, Quill18 here, and welcome to another Unity 3D tutorial on how to make a first-person multiplayer... I usually say it the other way around, don't I? Multiplayer first-person shooter. Uh, so, when we last left things off, we had correctly added the function so that we could join a team. And a lot of the function is in there, the only problem is we don't synchronize the, um, the team information over the network. So we're going to want to do that right now so that we can uh, then kill each other. So, we've got our network manager here. How are we going to do this? Hmm. Hmm, 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 Well, when we spawn, we set the team. I'm thinking that instead of setting the team as part of the spawn my player, I think we need to run an RPC. Yes, I like this idea a lot. Okay. So what we do after we spawn our character, we have to like send a tell to the network that says, set this player to this team. And we have already made this team member um, class. So let's use this to do just that. Uh, void, actually RPC. So it's a remote procedure call. And we're going to say void. Um, void, I don't know, set team ID. Int ID. So, let's take a look at what that's going to look like here. So, we're going to have the team ID here. And I'm going to grab all this code. This is the code to set the color. I'm going to pull that out and add this as part of this function. So when we set the team ID, it sets the color. We're also going to change it over here so we don't set the team ID here. We'll set team ID is equal to ID. Set team ID. In fact, maybe we'll even... Well, the fact that it's public makes it easy to... No, we will do this. We're going to change this to an uh, underscore to make it obvious that this is a private that no one else can touch. And then we'll make a public team id oh public int get return team id so the idea of this is my health script can still or anyone actually can still go you know get the team member dot team id and they'll return that but they can't write to it they have to use this rpc function to do it and this is not even public so they can't just call this directly they're going to have to do the rpc call to get it to work i think that will be okay so um, how do we do these RPC calls again? That's an excellent question that I'm going to remind myself about right now. Take a look at our health function over here. Uh, this one is public, but I don't think it has to be. So we've got that, and then we call it from player shooting. In player shooting, that's where we call the RPC of take damage. So... We don't, I don't think we need a photon view that tracks team member. I think as long as the object has a photon view, then we can send it an RPC, which we'll call that. So, over here in Network Manager, where we spawn, we're going to want this player game object. We're going to want to grab its photon view, then call the RPC function for, what's it called, set team ID. I'm going to I'm going to go through these steps again and, and clarify exactly what happened and then send it the team ID. Okay. So, what goes on here or what should go on here? In when we spawn the player, first thing we do is same as before, we spawn the player, you know, we get them into the game and then once it's instantiated, we grab its photon view component and tell everyone on the network we send a remote procedure call. So every person's computer will run this on their local copy. It will run the set team ID function on their own local copy and it will pass the team ID. So the player will show up on everyone's computer and then this function will then run locally on everyone's computer where it grabs their personal copy of the skin mesh on that player and sets the color. It also sets the team ID there. I think that this will work. Let's find out how many errors we've got. Hit play. Uh, let's let's do a, a single join here just to see what happens. 
All right, well, it's working on our computer. The RPC is running on uh, locally, so that's good. Now let's try to, uh, we're gonna build a, uh, a standalone. Fantastic. Join multiplayer. We'll join on the red team. Let's go back over here. We'll join multiplayer. Tell you what, we'll join on the green team first. I'm green. The other person is red. Now, because I did the RPC as a buffered call, it means that even though this player, the player I'm currently jumping around as, even though this player was not on the server when the RPC to set this guy's team to red was run, I still got that message. There's a few other ways of, of synchronizing this data. You could do it as, as a photon view update, lots of different things. This will be good enough for here. We might discover there's some issues with it later on, but that's okay. Now, I should be able to kill. Actually, I'll do it from this point of view. Let me move over a little bit like that. I should be able to misclick. There you go. Yeah, keep my mouse pointer in here because I don't have the lock on. One, two, three, four. He is dead. After three seconds, he should respawn. There he is, and he's still on Team Green. Great. Okay, that's working well. Now, what I'm going to do on this guy, I'm going to disconnect him. Yeah. I'm going to disconnect. Uh, no, I should have done it the other way around. Oh, silly me, because i got to restart my build again. Because I want to have them join the same team. So, we will go single player. I will join Team Red. Or sorry, did I say I went multiplayer, right? <laughs> multiplayer, Team Red. Okay, we are both cur correctly on Team Red. Indeed, we are. Now, I will shoot you. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We are correctly not inflicting friendly fire damage on each other. And that was a lot faster than expected, actually. I, the reason I put a cut in the last episode is because I figured this might take a little bit longer. Well, if we'd run into any problems to debug, it definitely would have taken longer, but it's not bad. Okay. Oh, here's one more test we can do. Let me go here. I will join Team Renegade. Renegade. So, if I move up here, switch back over here, I indeed have no color whatsoever, and I should be able to kill... I kind of move the mouse into the window. I should be able to kill him. One, two, three, four. Good. And then when he respawns, behind me, I'm going to switch view, and my Renegade should also be able to kill the team player. And indeed, we can. Everything is working perfectly. Look at that. Now, I mean, I don't think you'd normally make a game with like this sort of renegade mechanic. But uh, again, in a free-for-all deathmatch, everyone is just a renegade. So what you would really do is the first player, when they create, if they're if you're creating the server, you would set the parameters as to whether it's teams or whether it's a free-for-all, and you, would, you just do that. And that would be relatively easy to, you know, to sync up between each other. But I don't know. I kind of like this for now. For this testing, it works out uh, pretty well. So. Um, is there anything else I need to tackle for the team-based thing? Well, we do want to do scoring and things, but I think that that really does uh, justify its own video. So it's a short one, but I think it's a good one. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.